Hi everyone, this is Elena Krauss and welcome to another card video. In this video I'm using the Tone a Large Dahlia stamp set along with beautiful betas to create this uh, card. Uh, besides the stamp set I'm using my Misty and I'm using some watercolor paper. I'm using Arches cold press watercolor paper which is has pretty um, rough texture. So I'm using my Misty to over stamp a few times to create a nice image, nice stamped image uh, and to have uh, good coverage because uh, after I stamp with the Versamark I will emboss with white embossing powder. So let's get started. I actually already started so this is my first pass. First I apply anti-static powder to my uh, watercolor paper and then I stamp uh, this is the second time and I'll do one more time to ensure that I have um, nice coverage so when uh, I emboss the image I don't have empty spots like non embossed spots onto the paper. So I'm using some white embossing powder here just applying it to my card and uh, my panel and shaking the excess back in my container. Next I'll heat set it. So I'm going back in my Misty and uh, this time I'm using some uh, Inka Dinka Do masking paper. I'm just tampering with random uh, ink cube that I found on my desk, which is green. So after I stamped onto my uh, masking paper, I will cut this out to create a mask to stamp the leaves onto um, the panel to appear to be behind the flower. So I'm just cut it, cutting the rest there. Make sure that uh, covers the edges that I want. So I have this one here. I'm just arranging my leaves to see where I want them to be. So I'll just build the backing, adhere that on top, make sure that everything is uh, nice and covered and then I'm just arranging the leaves. I'm applying that anti-static powder and stamping again three times to ensure that I have uh, nice coverage of the ink onto the watercolor paper and I'm using the same leaf to um, stamp on the top part of the flower again three times and then I'll just apply the embossing powder again Again, I'm using white embossing powder and heat set it. You notice here that I applied the embossing powder on top of the masking paper. Uh, just in case if there was any sticky residue under the masking paper, the embossing powder didn't stick to it. So next I'm using the Zik Clean Color Real Brush Markers pens to color my image and I'm just picking out a few colors orange, light pink, uh, darker pink and then two greens and I'm just applying directly onto the watercolor paper and then blending it in with my water brush. So here I realized that I needed a little bit larger brush so I'm switching to Arteza uh, water brush and I'll continue coloring. So here I'll speed up a little bit more so you can see the full coloring process. And I'm repeating the same uh, process for each petal. I'm applying of that darker pink, then blending it with a lighter pink towards the center of the flower, the base of the petals, and then I'm applying the orange onto the very tip of the petals and then just blending towards both parts of the petal toward each other so in the middle they kind of mix in. So I'm just um, doing a few petals at a time here and then you can see with the water brush I'm uh, blending everything in and then adding some more pink if needed or some more orange to achieve that nice blend and nice transition of uh, color from pink to orange. I'm just adding more of that darker pink, more of the lighter pink. 
and then blending everything in with the water brush. So I found that these um, pens work best on the Arches uh, watercolor paper, the cold press Arches watercolor paper. Uh, it works, it blends very nicely on other uh, watercolor papers, but I found that the results are most vibrant on this one because the um, the color kind of keeps on top of the paper and you can achieve that very vibrant look. So this is my preferred watercolor paper to go and using the Misty it helps me achieve that nice uh, image, nice stamped image where I stamp it a few times and then uh, the ink, the Versamark, transfer it into the little creases of the little kind of bumps of the paper. So when you emboss it with the white embossing powder or any other embossing powder, you have that nice coverage and you have uninterrupted lines that gives you nice defined uh, look, image, in a way a better term to say. So when you color the, um, kind of the color doesn't bleed into the petal next to it, but it keeps contained into that embossed area because you have that nice co coverage. So I'm here. Uh, finishing up the flower. I'm almost done with the flower. I'm just adding some more lighter pink to blend in. And next I'll go with the um, leaves. So I'm using two greens. I'm using May green and um, the darker green. I don't really remember the colors on top of my head. But you can pick any two colors. Uh, they blend very nicely and when you add water it's even more beautiful. So here I'm just adding more dark and then blending it in. So here I'm done with the image. I'll just let it dry. And in the meantime, I'll stamp a little sentiment. Actually, I did forget that in order to make this image pop, I decided to add some gray around the flower. So that kind of creates a little background and make that uh, flower really pop towards the um, Sun, not the center, but um, kind of off the page in a way. So I'm just adding some green marker. I'm using acrylic block where I add some color there and then I transfer it to my paper. So now I'm using, now it's time for the sentiment. I'm using the Happy Birthday Sentiment from Beautiful Betas, a stamp set from the Ton. And then I'm stamping it on black cardstock using Versamark and embossing it with white embossing powder. So this didn't really um, emboss well. So I'll do it one more time, but I just wanted to see how it looks on the uh, my card. So I really liked how it looks. So I'm stamping it again nicely. And then I'll use the white embossing powder to apply to the sentiment and then heat set it. Then I'm using a little white piece of cardstock as a guide to see how uh, how thin I need to cut it. Next I'm using some uh, dimensional, like black dimensionals and a T-ruler to adhere that to my panel. I'm adding some um, raindrops or like little clear drops onto my card and I'm using the multi-matte medium to adhere to my card. It appears white but it dries clear so here it's I'm almost done. I'm just uh, gonna score a black a half piece of black cardstock, four and a quarter by eleven, scored at five and a half, and then I'm using some fun foam to pop up that pan panel to have even more dimension. So that finishes my card. Here's a little close up of the card, and don't forget to visit my blog as well as subscribe to my YouTube channel and come back for more videos. Thanks for watching. See you soon in another video. Bye.